I've played War Thunder for almost 10 years. Ah! No! What? With over 800 videos, exactly a month from today, I become a 10 year veteran. The hell is. What the hell is that? So join me as we explore some of my favorite vehicles War Thunder has to offer. Oh! <laughs> Hello! I'm in a 1930s bomber! Buy my decal. G'day, I'm Ash. Welcome back to Ash's Oddities, or whatever the hell we're going to call this series. I'm not entirely sure. It's This is the seventh episode. Essentially, I'm celebrating becoming a 10-year veteran. I thought I'd showcase, you know, some vehicles as I get to next month. Anyway, MBR2 M34, a Soviet float plane, and I must say that I'm a big fan of float planes in general. There are a couple of them in the game files, so sort of BRD6 or some, something along the lines, and we've got all those float fighters that accompany naval. So no, we're not playing naval today, but we are taking a look at this rank one, but already 1.0. Very interesting engine pusher aircraft, which is incredibly slow, but made incredibly fragilely. It is made out of mostly wood, uh, and the engine is in a pretty obvious spot. It does come equipped with two 7.62mm uh, gunners, two varying ammunition, one in an open air turret and one in a, a dorsal turret. And there is ability to mount a selection of bombs as you can see on screen. But I don't usually take those as I try to make this a, well, sort of an interceptor slash bomber interceptor. Despite its top speed not being the greatest, stick it with Universal. Love it if it have a forward fire of guns. Anyway, we're going to treat it like a typical bomber first and foremost. What you do traditionally in these sort of uh, period in this sort of game, uh, I, I tend to just go drop a bombs, a couple of things. If not, drop the bombs right away, and then go straight after the, the dive attackers slash other uh, vehicles. Because why the hell wouldn't you? And gun reloading. And by the time you've dropped altitude, I have no idea what that P-26 is doing. Look at it roll down the street there. Uh, down the railway tracks. Uh, you've basically got a couple of options. Because this thing is incredibly slow and it rips pretty easily, you don't really have a lot of options in terms of intercepting. So you've really got to entice the enemy towards you and, and really use the gunners to your best ability possible. For some reason I killed the P-26, but there is another one directly in front of me here and we're going to be chasing it to the ends of the earth, provided that he doesn't mess up his bomb drop, which <laughs> he just did. Apparently had bombs on the bottom of his aircraft. Now the gunners are set to 600 meters. I find that to be an optimal uh, sort of metric for using this kind of thing. Stuff like the BV-138 is, is another example of an aircraft that is incredibly good when you have gunners in the right position. I'm sort of just going to test how long it takes both gunners to really shoot this guy down without interfering. And daka 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 daka. Again, it's best if you manually control the guns because you sometimes will get better hits. But oftentimes, especially with an ace crew, you will get an opportunity like, for example, critically hit this P-26, so I basically ripped off his elevator. The Fury is coming in, but he's not going to get a hit on him because he's mine. So, there you go. Alright, let's showcase you a couple more clips, and you'll see what I mean. Bombing again. Splash. Of course, they don't call splash when their target is destroyed, but chasing after the bombers. I'm going to try and get a critical hit on this B-18A here. And both engines are out. He's basically cooking. And now just watch the fireworks display as he comes basically falling almost on top of this vehicle. What I love about those guns is they're incredibly effective with the, the Universal. But uh, they're not great when it comes to engaging fighters. Anyhow. Speaking of engaging fighters, here we are. I do want to try and get manual guns on. But for some reason, notice how I get a critical hit even though the guns aren't necessarily facing the, uh, the enemy aircraft. No idea what's that about. Sometimes you get lucky. For example, look, I'm mainly controlling the guns here, or I'm aiming at a certain distance, and sometimes you just raise the whip, whip wings apart. It's amazing what you can do with this thing. And here comes some of the, the, the typical fighters that you would face. The 2.0s and 2.3s, you get P400s, P40s. Uh, these things, HU-111s, and if they're... HU-111s. HU-112s, I'm oh, sorry, I'm still angered every single aviation fan. Those things are not as pesky as you want them to believe. Yeah. No, it, 
Just just a little better placing had he had shot me in my engine then I would have been dead. So again, if you're versing this thing, try and shoot it in the engine. Go over some other base statistics Crash. here just shortly. But that's another a kill to my name. Anyway, moving on to the next match. This is where things get interesting. I just am trying to decide what aircraft to really chase. And there is this B-18 again. Look at my speed. 212 kilometers an hour and I haven't even really dropped speed at all. Okay, very aim to try and set him on fire. There he is. There's the fire. Isn't that going to put that out? Minimal damage, except all damage has been taken yeah. to the engine. And this is when my engine dies after taking a little bit of more hit from another fighter, which I didn't manage to kill. I want to point out, though, that landing this thing is incredibly easy, especially if there's a water source nearby. And if you're landing on airfields, well, it's pretty easy, or carriers, or whatever, it doesn't matter. But, you know, this thing, because it's a float plane, is so fantastic, it can do this. But what surprised me is when I stopped moving the vehicle. Watch what happens next. So I'm just looking at the map, just seeing how far I am from the airfield, and then it gives me the 15 second timer of doom. I don't know. Apparently you can't land an aircraft successfully. Now, this is where things get really spicy. I have my arch nemesis directly in front of me. That is a BV-138. Those things are incredibly well armed. I'm going to be doing a video on that one soon, but I really need to get his attention try and knock him out before uh, bad things happen because those 20 millimeter guns they're really really effective now he should have jumped on his gunners and instantly critical hit me but I wasn't really prepared for this I managed to get the upper hand here and I've been spraying the living shit out of him uh, while my gunners are jammed and reloading try and manually move the aircraft while it just doesn't really want to hold the heading because it wants to auto level all the time uh, the gunner's also struggling against it. He has the clear upper hand here. Again, manually control the gunners. Aim for his pilot. Crash. And there we go. We are the first strike of many to come. Donia 17 isn't much of a, a threat, but that PBY is incredibly dangerous. I don't tend to entangle with PBYs. They tend to end up by uh, murdering themselves by ripping their wings as they fall down. It's interesting to note that there's a lot of different fighters down there and because this thing has a max speed of about 275 kilometers an hour you really lift well you're basically sort of limited to uh, this airframe's durability obviously that being said though this is a premium vehicle it was introduced in update 1.57 as the, the battle march uh, as a reward vehicle for the 2016 chronicles of world war ii uh, absolutely horrible event which i hope no, does not return anytime soon actually you had to play in a series of battles in order to get this particular machine and that was way back in uh 7th of may essentially you had to play a an event and you had daily tasks in order to really compete and and play in that particular event Rewards were the A34 uh, Comet Iron Duke, the KV2-1940 with the machine gun on the front, the MBR2, and of course Richard Bong's P38J with the picture on the front, which we'll probably end up by covering at some point. Now, as we're diving towards this D500, keep in mind our speed. I'm trying not to rip the wings here. Essentially what you get is combat flaps, take a flaps and landing, but no air brakes and resting. If this thing had air brakes, it'd be bloody fantastic. Gunner's going ham. I really need to get on and manually control that. But yeah, the fire rates is about 1,800 rounds a minute. And there we go. He's absolutely demolished. That poor Frenchman has returned to hang it. You know, surprisingly maneuverable, this machine. Especially with the combat flaps. Although I don't tend to use them too often unless I'm fighting a direct fighter that is, is engaging me. An ability to land on rivers, lakes, oceans and so on. Because it is a float plane. Uh, and it has a winter camo, as is shown here. I didn't show you the regular summer camouflage because I just think it looks boring, but it has a sturdy construction and it's quite forgiving when you're landing. Other than that, no protection for the pilot or crew or critical components. It's incredibly easy to shoot down. And yeah, the engine does exactly, because it's mounted, it's, it's in a vulnerable position. SD-371 isn't taking no for an answer, so I'm trying to chase him down and let the gunners do the work. I have no idea what that gladiator is doing down below me, but I'm going to about to be pull what I consider an epic gamer move here. We're going to pull directly up, lose all of our altitude. I'm going to quickly snap to the gunner here after we've got that other kill. And then hard rudder as we pull up. Nearly hitting the houses there and absolutely nailing the shit out of that J8A. 
what else is there? That's the third kill. Now, P26B and a D371 uh, left. That should be easy. Should be able to get the ace right here and now. But no, there are other plans for this match. And again, you can see the top speed not being particularly interesting. Oh, and the other thing as I mentioned, this thing's incredibly vulnerable from beneath attacks. I tend to use the boat hole as a bit of a sponge, particularly when you're engaging enemy fighters. I find that that tends to be a bit of a bullet sponge rather than your critical components. There's nothing worse than having your engine completely, uh, like, destroyed. Obviously, it's a multi-purpose boat, so this thing being a flying boat, and of the Soviet Navy in 1935. Built 1,365 of these in six versions. Uh, foreign countries, Finland, North Korea, and the Soviet Union. Uh, in Russia, they called it the Flying Cow, or uh, a Barn. And after the Second World War, the uh, plane was used to watch over fishing areas. Anyway, we've got a critical hit on that D3. Got a kill assist. Thankfully, the teammate killed it, or else I would have been angry. But not too bad. And we'll just pull up above the trees, just watching the engine power here. This would probably be a death sentence for most machines like this. But again, I've got light damage. And it really doesn't matter because this is the last guy. After about two minutes of climbing, we're well, only at about 1,800 meters. That PBY is getting attacked by a Japanese A5M, which hasn't yet killed the PBY for some reason. I was wondering why, but I hadn't figured out until I looked at the replay. He'd actually run out of ammunition. So, <laughs> there's that. Got a Hampton also coming in on the, the, the sort of uh, uh, event to try and capitalize on this PBY. And really, it's about setting yourself up for engagement. I want to go direct broadside, cross his T, use all my guns to literally devastate him. Uh, playing it like an, a, a flying battleship, essentially. If you've seen me play the TB3, you'll know I will do exactly that with this thing. I used to call this the light cruiser escort for a TB3. But nevertheless, you get a lucky pilot snipe there. I think it's a pilot snipe. Uh, and that is my ace gameplay. And watch as the PBY disappears. This is always an interesting one. Like, that's the last guy left. Just, just completely just disappeared. No idea why. But yeah, lots of medals. Lots of accomplishments. I think I've showed you what a good machine this one is. It's a hard machine to pull off. It really is. Because it is utterly useless at most aspects of its role. But yeah, a fun machine. A really challenging machine. It's good fun. And with the bomb loadout, it's great in ground forces. It's particularly useful in naval as well. And the all-round aspect of being able to land anywhere, although it's not really amphibious, it is, however, uh, water-friendly. And that leads itself to some fun gameplay. I've had games in the past where you just float along the river and then become an anti-air. <laughs> or land in the middle of a lake and watch the enemies try and attack you. It's always a good time. And if you can pick up this machine, sometimes it's available on the marketplace. Other times it's available in crates and it is a collectible and I, I really highly do recommend people try and pick it up. Reminds me very much of a BE-6, except for the fact that the BE-6 has to fight things that are relatively scary, although in of itself it's got 20mm cannons. Alright, thank you very much for watching today's video. I hope you had fun. Let me know what you think of this machine in the comments down below. My name is Ash and I'll catch you in the next one. Bye bye.